Welcome back. In the previous video, we created our navbar and do some simple routing inside our application. So in this video, we are going to focus on the user creating, that is user, re user registration and user login. So what do we need before we can get started? What we need is to create our action to make a call to our back end to make that request. So let's get started. So inside my front end and SLC Redux actions, I have only one action called books. So let me create one folder called users, users action. And inside my users action, let me create one file called users action, users actions.js. So action simply means that, um, is a way of causing a change or a state inside the application. So before you can get a state or some data and dispatch it into your store, we need to fire an action. And what action do we need? First of all, ask yourself, what kind of data do we need? First of all, we need a user to register. And where can we get that? From our back end. And how can we get there? Through an action. An action will take the data from the front end, like a car. And then we give our data to that car, that's our action. And then it will go to the, our back end behind the scene to fire or to make a request to that endpoint. And our server will respond with that request and give us a response. So let's head over to Postman and try it. So we head over to Postman like that. Inside, don't worry, don't mind me. I have a couple of projects I'm working on about many projects. So um, this is what is. Uh, real life project I'm working on for some people. So in the previous video, we have what is called bookkeeping app, okay, endpoint. And the user, we have one user, and the endpoint is API slash user slash register. So let me register a new user, right? Let me say um, Ben, and then here will be Ben at Jimmy. We did this one during our back end um, development. So let me register, as you can see, we have made a request to our backend and our backend respond to us with this nice data. So here I can tell you that the way we are sending data to the back end, in the front end, we call it an action. So what does this need? It needs a data. And where can we get it? From our front end, right? So we are going to create an action instead of doing from the postman from the front end that way. So let's go there and then start creating our action. Let me remove this empty desktop if I'm here. All right. And what do we need? Let's create a function. Let me say cons. You know, remember an action is a function. Let me say cons register user user action. And this process is equal same as what the one when you are creating the book, right? So this function needs couple of parameters here. So we need the name. You can you can make use of an object and say user data. So in our front end, we just pass an object. But I want to tell you, show you a different way of doing that when passing data to a function. Remember, this is a normal JavaScript function. A function uh, first class citizen, which means that we can pass a string or a boolean to a function. We can pass a, an object to a function, and we can even pass a function to a function. But in the previous video that we created for the book, we pass in an object as an argument to the function. But this time around, I want to pass in a simple um, string like that. So I need a name of the user, email, and then the password. This is what I need to create a book. Uh, sorry, to create a user. And I will have my function. So instead of our normal function to make a call to our back end, we have to make use of what is called dispatch. Okay, because we install we add Redux Thunk. That is an, a middleware that will help us to make a sync call inside our action creator. All right, so here I want to make use of a sync. So I will say this part here, then we're confused about the sync task. It means that when you have one parameter, you can ignore the bracket. So here, I'm gonna dispatch some action. So first of all, I will dispatch an action type. I will say um, the type will be, what do you call it? User register request. So let me point out that I have all these constants here in the previous video, action types. All right, here, my action types. 
So we've made use of the um, create book and now we make use of users. Yeah, this one. So we have um, user register request, user register success and fail. So let's go over to our users and then let me import. I think user register request auto import for me. I'm lucky this time around. And I don't need to set anything. So in my front end reducer, when I, I can make a logic that when you, when a user is big attempt to register a user, we say that if the type of the action is called register a request, and then now we say that it's loading. So next is that after dispatching this one, then this one I'm going to make the actual make actual call. Okay, and see. So what do we need? We need to pass some config. Like I was to tell you that it's optional, but it's really important when you have when you're familiar with the way we pass um, some um, headers to our request. So a config here and it needs headers. Okay, so headers and be an object. And first of all, I want to set my content type. I always say that by default, Express can all pass our incoming data as JSON but I want to pass it by myself also and there's no change, there's no difference or let me see, there's no effect of that. All right, so here I have my config ready created. So I'm going to make the actual call. So I will say cons and I will say response is equal to a wait and what do I need? My Axios, let me import it here as that. So let me import Axios from Axios as that. All right. So here I will say Axios that post because I want to make post requests. Sorry, <laughs> it's not Axios dot post. And why the endpoint? That we have tag That is a API slash user slash register because I have proxy this one inside my front end from my previous video. So I can copy the route here. And then come back to my code and then put it here. So it's API, it's slash API. So look at the pathway. And I'll pass in my config first, right? I'll pass in my data, sorry, first. And um, Axios requires to be an object, right? So I can pass in an object with some properties. So this is what's coming from the front end. So first of all, I require name. For me, it says if the names are the same, value and the key are the same, you can ignore the name. And the email, and then the password, right? And then the last parameter I pass in is my config, right? Like that. So I have it done. So what will come out from this request is this. When we go to Postman, this is what we have. So, and this is on the property called data. So I can quickly destructure that one from my request here and I will grab data, right? So when everything goes on well, then I can dispatch my action. So here I will say dispatch an action of type is really important is user register success. Sorry, not login, it's user register. It's a register success. User register success. All right, and I have to send a payload of the data that is coming back. Remember, the data can be an error. So let me try and register again. As you can see, I have nice internal server error, which is user exists. Right, so I have to handle that error. So I have to put them, I always forget my try and catch. So let me copy all of these ones um, from my dispatch here, everything from my function, and then cut it to clipboard. I think I missed some. I wrongly copy some. So let me copy from dispatch between my dispatch. So here, from here to um, from all the dispatch. Let me cut it and then let me put them to try and catch. And then put the request here and inside my catch, I have to catch an error that is coming. So the same thing, dispatch an action if something goes wrong. And I will say type will be user register fail. 
all right and then i will send a payload like i told you payload can be an error or the actual data so i'll pass in the error like that so in my in my reducer i can grab the necessary error that is coming from this payload all right so guys this is how we create but um one more step about the registration is that I want to put, I want to quickly register the user when the, when the person, sorry, I want to quickly authenticate the user or log in the user when the person register for the first time. So what I can do is I have to save the login details, details into my local storage. So if you look, <coughs> sorry guys, so if you look, let me log, register with a new person here with Ben and then this one, whatever. And you can, as you can see, I have this token. I want to save this token and the whole of this user into my local, uh, sorry, uh, what do you call it, uh, local storage. And then I will pull it from my local storage and then place it inside my store. So anytime I will check for my local storage, if there's a user, then I will quickly log in the user. Otherwise, I'm not allowed to log in. So I'm going to save all this information inside my, what do you call it, um, inside the local storage. So what I'm going to do is that when everything goes on well, right, when everything goes on well, after registration, here, after dispatch, after success, here, I will say, save the user into local storage. You will see the importance of it as we move on. So here, we have the local storage API dot set item. And this item requires a very sorry a property name or quality user of data. And what can data pass in is called my data coming back from my response. This one. And I have to pass it as a how pass to JSON stringify. This is what it's required. So I will say JSON.stringify and change the string and then I will say data. Excellent. So I have it done. All right. So inside the action, rather my error, let me quickly return the necessary error that is coming from the my error. So when it fails, we're going to check, right? If there is error, and then there is error. It's a response. If there is error dot response, then I will say error dot response. You, if you remember, that's what we did when we created the uh, book um, endpoint, sorry, the book um, action. All right. So if there is something of that sort, then I will pull the error dot message, okay, into that. So guys, this is how we create the register um, action. So in the next video, we will create a reducer and then push it into our store and then we make the actual call from our front end. Thanks for watching.